Hi everyone, let's talk about plate boundaries. Take a look with the outer surface of the earth. It looks like one solid shell. But according to plate tectonic theory, this outer layer called lithosphere is actually broken up into massive rigid slabs called tectonic plates that fit together like puzzle pieces floating on a thick molten layer of the mantle called the asthenosphere. The plates slide, collide, and move away from each other. Now, Earth's crust is divided into seven major plates. The boundaries between these plates are dynamic, violent places that make and break Earth's crust. The relative movements of plates create three types of plates. Divergent boundary, transform boundary, and the convergent boundary. Now let us discuss the three distinct types of plate boundaries, which are differentiated by the type of movement they exhibit. The first type of plate boundary is termed divergent boundary, wherein plates move apart, creating a zone of tension. Can you identify adjacent plates depicting divergent boundary on this figure? An example of this is between the South American plate and the African plate. A divergent boundary is also known as constructive boundary. This plate boundary is characterized by tensional stresses that normally produce long rift zones, normal faults, and basaltic volcanism. The volcanic country of Iceland exemplifies the processes that occur along a divergent boundary. It splits along the mid-Atlantic ridge borders of North American and Eurasian plates. As North America moves westward and Eurasia shifts eastward, a new crust is created on both sides of the boundary. As a crust adds mass to Iceland on both sides, a reef along the boundary is also carved out. Most divergent boundaries are situated along underwater mountain ranges called oceanic ridges. As the plates separate, new materials from the mantle ooze up to fill the gap. These materials will slowly cool to produce new ocean floor. The spreading rate at these ridges may vary from 2 to 20 centimeters per year, although a very slow process Divergence of plates ensures a continuous supply of new materials from the mantle. The Mid-Atlantic Ocean Ridge is an example of spreading center which causes the divergence of the South American plate and the African plate. Let's take the case of the Philippine plate and the Eurasian plate. You will notice that the two plates are moving toward each other. This is an example of a zone where plates collide, and this second type of plate boundary is called convergent plate boundary. This type of plate boundary is also called the destructive plate boundary. It occurs where two plates are pushing toward each other. Hence, the crust is destroyed and recycled back into the interior of Earth while one plate dives under another. How does it happen? When a moving plate of dense oceanic lithosphere collides with a plate moving in the opposite direction, one of the plates subducts beneath the other. The younger of the two plates will ride over the edge of the older plate because the former is less dense. Behavior plates eventually bend steeply through the asthenosphere and descends into Earth, creating a trench that can be as much as 100 kilometers wide, more than 1,000 kilometers long, 
and several kilometers deep. Subduction zones are the regions where a portion of the tectonic plates are diving beneath other plates into Earth's interior. These zones are defined by deep oceanic trenches, large earthquakes that extend from the trenches landward and lines of volcanoes parallel to the trenches. General examples of convergent boundaries include the boundary between the Eurasian plate and the Indian plate at the Himalayas and the boundary between the Nazca plate and the South American plate along the west coast of South America. There are three types of convergent boundaries. The first one is called converging continental plate and oceanic plate. From the diagram, it is clear that this event gives rise to the formation of a volcanic arc near the edge of continental leading plates. The reason for this is because the denser oceanic crust, which is plate A, undergoes what we call subduction process or the bending of the crust towards the mantle. Since the mantle is hotter than the crust, the tendency is that the subducted crust melt forming magma. Addition of volatile material such as water will cause the magma to become less dense. Hence, allowing it to rise and reach the crust once again and causing volcanic activities on the continental leading plate or in plate B. For the oceanic crust, one important geologic feature is formed and that is the trench, also called the submarine valleys. Ocean trenches are the deepest part of the ocean. One of the deepest is the Philippine Trench with a depth of 10,540 meters. Another subsequent effect of the continuous grinding of plates against each other is the occurrence of earthquakes. The subduction of plate can cause earthquakes at varying depths. Most of the world experience occasional shallow earthquakes, where the focus is within 60 kilometers of the Earth's surface. Of the total energy released by earthquakes, 85% comes from shallow earthquakes, and about 12% of energy originates from intermediate earthquakes or those quakes with a focal depth range of 60 to 300 kilometers. Lastly, are the deep earthquakes whose origin is more than 300 kilometers to 700 kilometers below the Earth's surface. The second type of convergent boundaries is the convergence of oceanic plates. Like the first type of convergent boundaries, converging oceanic plates will cause formation of trenches, and these trenches will become sources of earthquakes. Underwater earthquakes, especially the stronger ones, can generate tsunamis, the Japanese term for harbor wave. Tsunami is a series of ocean waves with very long wavelengths, typically hundreds of kilometers, caused by large-scale disturbances of the ocean. The leading edge of the subducted plate will eventually reach the mantle causing it to melt and turn into magma. The molten material will rise to the surface creating a volcanic arc parallel to the trench. Volcanic island arc is a chain of volcanoes positioned in an arc shape such as the Japanese islands, the Aleutians Islands, the Caribbean Islands, and the Philippine Islands. The third type of convergent boundary is the convergence of two continental plates. Continental-continental convergence occurs when two continents meet head-on. This type of convergence is different from oceanic-oceanic convergence as continental crusts are too light to slide down into a trench. As such, neither plate is pushed underneath the other. The result of convergence 
is the formation of tall mountain ranges. The Himalayas, known as Earth's highest mountain belt, is an example of a zone of mountains that rose when India collided with the Eurasian continent. The third type is the transform fault boundary, where plates slide or grind past each other without diverging or converging. Unlike the two boundary types, transform boundary neither creates nor destroys a crust. Hence, it is also called conservative boundary. Transform boundaries are generally vertically and parallel to the direction of movement. They are produced by shearing and are closely related to divergent plate boundaries on the ocean floor. When they occur on the seafloor, they form oceanic fracture zones, while when on land, transform boundaries produce faults. Both fracture and fault line connect offsetting divergent zones. The San Andreas Fault Zone in California is a transform fault that connects two diverging boundaries, namely the East Pacific Rise along the Pacific Ocean and South Punta Gorda in Florida. The immediate concerns about transform fault boundaries are earthquake activities triggered by movements along the fault system. Thanks for watching my dear students.